Acts chapter 2. this or not, but this full fit, this table down here in these chairs, this used to be a Presbyterian church years ago. They went off and left them, so we're going to use them. Acts chapter 2, we got 30 in it. Verse 1. I appreciate you singing that song, Charles. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I love Gary's message last week that behold, I stand at the door and knock. I love that we've got a Pentecostal preacher preaching in our pulpit. I love that the power of God is being brought together. Churches need to quit looking at signs over top of the door. And we need to start coming together and being one body in Christ Jesus. Verse 2 says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I'm looking for another sound. Charles mentioned it. A sound of the rapture of the trumpet sound. I'm looking forward to that. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house. All the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of far. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all. I love the word all, don't you? Yeah. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was nosed abroad, the multitude came together and confounded because that everyone heard them speak in his own language. Look at verse 14. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judah and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of the prophet Joel. And I'm telling you, when Peter quotes this, he quotes it exact. And I like that. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, I underline servants, on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out on those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and noble day of the Lord come. Now verse 21 is important. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear God. Thank you, Lord, that the power of God is still real today. The only problem is, Lord, we're not coming together and we're not seeking the Lord like we need to. And I'm praying, Father, and asking you, dear God, send that unction unto us 
that makes us more aware of our prayers, more aware of seeking God in the presence of a living God, to the place, Lord, that we become so entwined with the Spirit of God together as one body of believers that we become overwhelmed by the power of God that can change lives. Lead us, Lord. Guide us into this overwhelming yes. presence of God that, Lord, we can be the vessels that you need me to be. Oh, precious Father, we love you and appreciate you. But today, Lord, let us minds be in one place, in one situation to where we can all come together and believe that the Spirit of the living God has come down today to lift us to where we can worship you. This we ask in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Now, history. The year was August the 6th, 1801. Brother Stone was a Presbyterian preacher. You might want to write this down and, and look it up. Cane Ridge, Kentucky. He had called together, he had been in a, a good old Holy Ghost filled meeting, and so he had called together that we're going to have a communion service at Cane Ridge. And they sent the word out, and of the 18 Presbyterians that came, they came also a bunch of Methodists and a bunch of Baptists. And they came together on this day of Friday, and at this time, 800 to 1100 had gathered there. But you see, Kentucky had just become a state 10 years earlier. And so all the people were migrating out of the old land and into Kentucky and Tennessee and Ohio and Pennsylvania and places like that, and they were moving westward. When they got together, now I say together, when they got together and began to seek the Lord, they come together on that Friday. And they begin to pray from Friday all the way to Sunday to make sure that God was in the arrangement with this. And when they begin to pray, something began to happen. When they begin to seek the Lord, all of a sudden, more people started showing up. By the time Sunday come, there was anywhere between 12,000 and 500 to 20,000 people that had gathered together in one place. You see, church, we're a little bitty church, but every other church that believes that Jesus Christ rose from the dead is our brothers and our sisters. Amen. No matter what the name is over Amen. the door, they still, we're still brothers and sisters. As Danny Robbins says, they're not going to fence the Baptists off on one corner of heaven. We're all, all going to be there in one accord. And when the power of God comes, I don't want to be outside and miss it. I want to make sure that I'm right where the power of God is because I need that anointing power of God. Don't you? I need to be lifted up by the only thing that can lift you up. The devil can't lift you up. It takes God's power to lift us up. So when you begin to come together, you begin to pray and seek God with everything that's in us, things are going to change in a mighty way. 